So far we've connected a 7 segment display and switch interface to our SPI and what we're going to do now is use a number of Grove modules to connect up to our microcontroller using the Grove Base Shield version 2. Now before we put this shield in place we're going to disconnect all the connectors that were originally connected to our Freedom K64, place this shield on our UNO connector and there's only one way to do that because the pins are unique. And once we do that, we're going to reconnect all of our SPI interface back to the shield, as you can see here. So we've done that. And there's a couple other things that you should be aware of. Is down here we have a 3.3 5 volt switch. It should be in the 3.3 volt side. And the other thing you should note here also is there's a reset switch, which makes it a lot easier to reset our board once we've downloaded our code. When we press the reset button on here and run our code from before, Everything should work as it did in the past. One, two, four, eight, and so on. And it doesn't matter, as we saw before, what we do with these switches. It changes what we have on our screen up here on the, as a second digit, but it has no effect on the seven segment display because the seven segment display is only affected by these upper four switches. Now, the first thing that we're going to connect to our Grove Shield is our temperature sensor. And our temperature sensor requires us to hook it to a four pin wire. Notice these four wires are black, which is ground, red, which is 3.3 volts, white, and yellow. And white and yellow carry the data. Now of these two, only one of them is going to carry data because usually you either get a temperature sensor or a temperature slash humidity sensor. In this case, since we don't have the humidity sensor, only one of these two wires is going to actually carry data. Now there's only one way to connect these and so it's pretty foolproof. Once it's connected, the next thing you need to do is connect it to the Grove Shield. What we've done here is we've connected our temperature sensor to our A0 connector on our Grove Shield. Notice black is here, which is ground. V is red, which is 3.3 volts. White is not connected and yellow is connected to our temperature sensor on this pin. Now notice up here we have A1 showing up again. Now if we wanted to connect something that had two things here such as a temperature slash humidity sensor would take up both of these pins and therefore we would not be able to use this connector we'd have to connect to here. No matter what we do the most we can have is four connectors to A0 through A3. In this case, it makes sense that our yellow wire is here to connect it to here, which means this is available to connect either to two pins on a device and here, or we can connect a single pin device here, a single pin device here, and a single pin device here. No matter what we do, the most we can get is four connections here. Now if you take a look at what's inside this rectangle here, you're going to find that we have D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, and D8. But each one of these again has 2 and 3, then 3 and 4, 4 and 5, 5 and 6, and so forth. Which means that if we plug something in here that uses these two pins, we can only plug into this guy. If it uses one pin, then we can plug into the next guy. But no matter what we do, we only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 different I.O. devices that we can connect into here. If this takes two pins, then we have to jump to this guy. If this guy takes one pin, we can go to here. If this takes two pins, then we'd have to jump to here, and so forth. Now, the UART is a little different because it uses transmitter and receiver, which is really D0 and D1. And you'll notice here, there's no other D0 and D1. So whatever we hook here has no effect on any of these other ones. It will not interfere here. Now, the nice thing about the I squared C is I squared C even though it uses A4 and A5 here, it, each one of these I squared C devices internally has their own address. So it doesn't matter whether you plug something into here, it will have no effect on these, or here it will have no effect on those. So altogether you can plug into this Grove Shield for I squared C devices without any conflict at all with any other I squared C device or any of these digital or analog connectors here. Now if we run the program and we have our temperature sensor here, one of the things we can find is that typically right at this time we have 27 degrees Celsius or 80.8 um, 
or 80.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So as the temperature fluctuates in the room, this is the ambient temperature. But over here what I have is I have ice water and over here I have boiling water. So if I just happen to touch this onto here, just onto the side of the glass, we can see very quickly that our temperature is going to decrease. And this is a good way to check to see that your temperature sensor is indeed working without causing it any damage. So as it goes down and down and down, it will eventually get down to a temperature close to what the glass is. Now if I bring this back up again it's going to then start climbing slightly but if I touch it to the side of the container that has boiling water in it it's going to then increase again and this again is a good way to check to make sure that your temperature sensor is indeed working properly.